Some breaking news on the Ethiopian air crash. CNN has now obtained a copy of the preliminary report that hasn't been made public yet. Investigators found significant similarities between last month's crash and the one involving a Lion Air flight less than five months earlier. As has been suspected, both of the planes, you'll recall, involved were Boeing 737 MAX 8 jets. CNN's Tom Foreman is joining me now. He has more details uh, coming in from this preliminary report. Tom, what are you learning? Yeah, hi, Kate. This report, which really the entire aviation world has been waiting for, paints a very dramatic and stark picture of what happened in this very short flight, ending with these terrible fatalities. Simply put, it describes an airplane that at least four times automatically started diving toward the ground, according to the investigators, while the crew fought against that plane. They say that time and again they were getting erroneous readings about the angle of the plane. There were also some fluctuations in the indication of the airspeed and the altitude of the plane. In some cases, different readings from different sides of the plane and the whole time the crew was trying to fight it. In fact, there is evidence that uh, at one point they were able to pull back together. They started pulling back together. The captain asked the first officer to pitch up together. They both did and said the pitch was not enough. They were both pulling back numerous times in this flight trying to overcome this. There's also an indication that they did manage to figure out what the problem was. Huh. Um, a few minutes before it ended, they had diagnosed the problem and they had disabled this MCAS system, this automatic system we've been talking about so much that people think caused the dive. The problem was, that was three minutes before the crash, but they could not then adjust the trim to recover the aircraft according to this preliminary report. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, after all of this had happened, they were trying to go back they simply could not get the plane to start coming up. It kept diving in. And, and one of the most startling things about this, they said the plane ended up in roughly a 40 degree dive, which would be something like that, at speeds approaching 600 miles an hour oh my God. as it finally went into the ground. So the, at least this preliminary report, and it will take months and months to get more information. The preliminary report describes a plane pitching through the sky as the crew fought it and the plane seemed to fight them. It does not assign blame. It does not say specifically we know why this was happening. Mm -hmm. It just says that the voice recorder and, uh, and the data recorder both indicate that this was going on with this plane. It started right after a normal takeoff and ended with the loss of all of these lives. Kate. And significant similarities between this, what, what happened to this plane, these final moments, and the final moments of the doomed Lion Air flight just less than five months before that. Yeah, and that's, it, it, it certainly looks that way. And again, yeah. we have to get the final result. This is just a preliminary finding. It assigns no blame right now. But this certainly paints a very dire picture. Wow, that pitch, that airspeed, that's terrifying. Tom, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate You're it. Welcome. This coming out in this preliminary report. <coughs> Excuse me. Joining me right now uh, is Peter Goles. He's a former managing director of the National Transportation Safety Board, part of the international team um, the NTSB is that is trying to figure out exactly what happened in this flight. Uh, he's now a CNN aviation analyst. Peter, thank you so much for coming in. What do you make of this, These the, the findings coming from this preliminary report as Tom was just laying out? Well, first, it's, it's really good reporting that uh, we were, CNN was able to get that report because up until now, all we had was a long tweet and a press conference from uh, the Ethiopians. But what the report does is really turn the spotlight back on Boeing and on the FAA's approval process. Uh, apparently, these pilots knew what to do, and that, that really coincides with everything I've heard about mm -hmm. Ethiopian uh, Airways training. These pilots knew what to do. They diagnosed the problem. They did it by the book, and it didn't save the aircraft. That really uh, uh, throws this investigation uh, into a turmoil because there is, unless they can identify a maintenance issue with the angle of attack indicator or something with the airspeed indicators, this is going to be a very daunting investigation. Yeah, I mean, and it, it does, I mean, you of course immediately go to what if these pilots diagnosed the problem, did everything that they were supposed to do by the book, 
Um, but again, it's, I mean, it's six minutes, it's six minutes of terror for these pilots and everyone on board and what they're dealing with. What does this say about the safety of these jets and also the fact that, uh, you know, you've got them grounded worldwide right now? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's two things. One is, after the Lion Air uh, accident, Boeing put out a directive that was followed up by the FAA that essentially said, read the manual, fly the manual, you know, remember how to do a runaway trim tab uh, uh, solution. And, and that was their answer to, to, to Lion Air. This now says, well, even if you did that, it didn't save them. And it puts them back on the spot to come up with a new uh, software and new pilot response that's going to have to be fully vetted. And frankly, uh, the FAA is going to have to reestablish their credibility with the world's aviation organizations to say, we've looked at this in a rigorous way. We think it's safe. It's going to take some time. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to ask you that, Peter. What's it going to take? Because right now, that trust is shaken, to say the least. There's no question. I mean, you know, there, there was speculation uh, after Lion Air that it would be, you know, uh, they'd have the fix in a couple of weeks. After, uh, even after the Ethiopian Airways tragedy, they said, well, we're, we, we've got the fix coming. We're going to make it, uh, you know, a, a little more in-depth, make it less severe when the nose goes down, that clearly is not enough. They're going to have to go back to the drawing boards and rethink wow. this entire MCAS system. Well, as Tom Foreman points out, this preliminary report does not assign blame, but the spotlight very clearly not shifting away from Boeing at this moment. Peter, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.